Okay, welcome to part 3 of this tutorial series. In this video we are going to create the go.php page, having finished the shorten.php page in the previous video. Um, just during this little the break between videos, um, I added Google to the system. If I go to the database you see we have the Google I spelt wrong and then Google properly with key 2. Um, suppose this highlights the point that the filter var function can not really be tricked exactly, but it can allow an uh, invalid URL. It's not perfect, basically. Um, it allows this for a, a reason that, um, well, you could be working with a local network and that would be a valid URL. In fact, I think there's an option that you can pass to the function that prevents that. Anyway, you can look that up yourself. Um, it doesn't really matter if you have invalid URLs in the database. Uh, all it means is that they get to take up a bit of space that you don't necessarily want to use. But yeah, for this is for the purposes of this, that is perfectly fine. Okay, so what we're going to do is create the go.php page. If you see at the moment, um, the file is completely blank, other than this include. So if I now copy this URL into the browser window, in fact into a new tab, we see we get a blank page. And what we want to do on this page is check that the um, variable has been provided. We also want to check if um, the URL is valid. And if both of those are true, then we want to send the user to that URL using the location header function sort of thingy, which I'll describe, talk about, show you in a moment. Right, so the first thing we want to do is check if the um, get variable is set. So we do is set get key, which is going to be the URL key. Um, and if it is, uh, I'm sorry, if it isn't, we want to show an error. So if that is equal to false, we want to show an error which we're just going to say is echo invalid URL key. Don't want to give away too much information, so that will do. Um, we also want to show this information, this error message, if the URL they supply is not um, not valid if it's not in the table basically. So we're going to do or something else. And that something else is going to be the get URL function call. <coughs> if you remember the get URL function that we defined earlier would return false if the um, URL was not found in the table. If the URL key was not found in the table, sorry. Uh, you see that here we have if the number of rows is equal to one return this otherwise return false. So here we can use this to our advantage by um, checking the um, checking for the existence of the row in the table as well as defining the URL that we're going to redi redirect to. So in this inside these brackets here we're going to define URL URL equals get URL and the key which is get key like so. And then what we want to do is check this. If this returns false, we want to show this error, otherwise we want to carry on. Um, you can, this is the, the point here, uh, you can define, what this does is it checks this against false as well as defining this variable as the result of this function. So basically what PHP does is uh, this this first, basically, so it's defining get URL, result of that, to this variable, and then checks that whole thing, which is the same as just checking that, against false. If it is false, we show this error. If it's not, we, we get into this else block. Um, and we still have this URL variable defined. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, the reason we do this check second, by the way, is because PHP will stop here. Um, so say if you, you don't define the get variable key, um, PHP will find this that this is false and it won't do this second check. It won't do the database query. Uh, so it'll be a little bit more efficient in a way, because if you did this first, it'd do the query and then check if it was not set. Also, you might get some sort of errors if you try to like use this like this and it's before you check if it's set. So anyway, um, what we're going to do if both of these conditions um, are true, so if it is set and if it is valid, um, is send the location header. So we're going to do that by using the header function, and then we're going to send oops, and the location header, location, and then after that you just send the URL. Now we've used this before to redirect the user around our own site, but you can use it to redirect them to any page. 
So location, um, the location is just going to be the URL variable which we got from the database uh, here. Oops, sorry, here, there, that I've highlighted now. So that's it, that should work. If I go back to our page and hit reload, you see we get redirected to Google. If I now change this to, say, 1, you see we get, re get redirected to Google. I think that's my browser correcting the typo, to be honest. If I, get, if I change this to 3, we get invalid URL key. If I go back to our URL shortening page and add YouTube, YouTube.com, YouTube, YouTube, and hit shorten, and now reload this. You see, we get redirected to YouTube, and I have a comment. I'll read that in a moment. Um, so that's the Go page pretty much complete. Um, the point I was making about the HD access file uh, is that you can use a HD access file, a read write rule, to basically remove this part from the URL. So you, you can get this and go to there, and that will work. At the moment, it doesn't. It gives a 404 error because we haven't done the HD access rule. So we can add that, and it'll make your URLs even shorter. Oh, uh, one other point. Um, obviously, th this isn't very long. This is really long. It's a lot, lo a lot longer than the URLs I've been shortening. That's because this is just a demonstration of the sort of principles behind the system. I'm not actually creating a site. You can't use this yourself. It's just for a demonstration. So don't complain that I'm making my URLs short, uh, longer than I am shorter. Anyway, uh, so what we want to do is create. Uh, no, we want to go to our uh, URL root folder here and create a new empty file. I'm just going to call that file .htaccess. And then we're going to open that file up. Uh, what's happened? Okay, open that file up. Um, and then we want to do something in that file. It will convert this into the proper URL. So into that. So what we're going to do is use a mod rewrite rule. Um, before we can do that we need to turn on the rewrite system. So we do rewrite engine on and that will enable mod rewrite for this um, folder. And then after that it's a very simple rule. We just need to specify a rewrite rule. Rewrite rule and this takes sort of two parameters, well three. Uh, the first one is a regular expression which matches the thing we want to send, sort of. Um, the basic, yeah, it's a pattern that we're matching. It's mm, it's matching re matching the URL that we want to rewrite into a different form. So it's matching the pattern that the user types in the browser, basically. Um, anyway, let's see how that works by uh, just doing it. Um, the expression we're going to use is this, which means the star of the string, something in brackets, and then this, which means the end of the string. And this something in brackets is going to be a character class, and it's going to be it's going to need to be more than zero characters. It's going to be one or more characters, which that plus means. Inside this character class, we're just going to have a to z and naught to nine, without the q, because they're the characters that our key can be. Obviously, again, uh, if you're using a slightly more complicated key algorithm, you can make this more complicated. Um, add more characters, like you could have underscores, blah blah, blah that kind of thing, anything, basically any character. Okay, so now we have that. We want to do a space, and then we're going to redirect this to the go.php page, and the key variable is going to be equal to this. Uh, and this dollar sign one is sort of like a PHP variable, and it, um, the web server will fill in these variables with anything in brackets like this. So whatever matches this pattern inside the brackets will be replaced here, and then this whole page will be displayed. Um, just check this now. If I just uh, reload this page. See, we get Google, so it works directly as well. Um, if I go here again, um, the reason it doesn't break this page is because there's no dot in our character class, so this isn't being matched by the rule. So if I just did shorten, this would be matched, and we get invalid URL key. If I did just slash two, you see we get Google. If I did just go back twice, if I did slash three, we should get YouTube, like so, which is good. It's working. Um, so that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. Um, I think that's how most of the URL shortening sites will work. They might do a little bit more validation, and a bit more JavaScript pointlessness. Uh, let's just do a full example to demonstrate how it works. Oh, actually, now there's one more change that needs to be made, isn't there? Um, obviously, on the shorten page, now we don't need to output this fourth thing. We can just have slash the URL key. 
So that's that changed. Uh, your URL equals the URL of the site, um, the folder just a slash, and then the URL key, which I will demonstrate now. So say if we type in um, my website, but spell it right, and then hit shorten, you see we get this. So that's obviously a long URL, but it doesn't matter. If I browse to this now, so if we go to the Go page and get redirected to my empty website at the moment anyway. But you can see it's working, and that's all the principles of a URL shortening website, like the popular ones. So now you can make your own and make millions from it. So yeah, that's the end of this tutorial series. Um, there'll be another one next week on something that I haven't decided yet. Uh, if you have any sort of suggestions for videos, I'm open to them. Always looking for ideas, so you can send me a message on YouTube, or leave a comment, or do whatever. Prefer a message. Anyway, up to you. Uh, so thanks for watching, and hopefully you find this at least vaguely useful.